As we're all aware, uh, the recent indictments, the criminal investigations, I think have renewed the public's interest in seeing us enact reforms that equip them with rooting out uh, public corruption. The reality is that public corruption, unfortunately, has a long history in Illinois. Of course, the separation of the Comptroller's Office and the Treasurer's Office all resulted from uh, corruption that existed back in the uh, mid-1900s. Unfortunately, today, we've seen all of the reform efforts being blocked by the political leaders. And our, the citizens, our constituents are reaching out to us continuously and saying that we need to do more to root out the corruption that exists around the state. Uh, the reality is the public has little ability to remove a corrupt public official. Now, other states have enacted reforms that are useful in guiding us here. And in fact, what Representative Batnick and I have done is looked at some of those other states. There's at, at least 18 other states who have some recall provision available uh, to their citizens. We've looked at that uh, for best practices. And we're in introducing those uh, today, as Representative Batnick said, in three different constitutional amendments uh, that will equip the public with the tools that they need to hold public officials accountable so that those public officials uh, begin to serve the constituents and the citizens uh, that they're elected to represent. What we're doing is empowering and restoring uh, the power to the people here. So three constitutional amendments. First, a, an amendment to recall statewide constitutional officers uh, the Speaker of the House, Senate President, and the Auditor General. Uh, currently, the, con the Illinois Constitution allows for a limited recall of a governor. This was an effort put in place after uh, Governor Blagojevich uh, was indicted. That tool is very limited in its use. It's very complicated and cumbersome. And so what we do is remove the barriers on that and extend that provision to the other constitutional officers, again, the Speaker of the House, Senate President, Auditor General. It requires a petition to be signed by uh, at least 12% of the number of voters who vote, who cast a vote for governor in the preceding election. Uh, second, we propose an amendment that allows for the recall of members of the General Assembly. Uh, there's no provision today that allows the public to remove corrupt members of the General Assembly. Uh, we put that in place through our amendment, again, it would require a petition signed by at least 12% of the numbers of votes cast for governor in that targeted district in the preceding election. And then third, we provide an amendment that allows for the recall of local government officials. Again, there's no provision in our constitution today that allows the public to remove corrupt local uh, uh, public officials. We would do that again. It would require a petition, the number of signatures required is determined on a sliding scale based on the number of registered voters that exist within a targeted district. Uh, what's important to note here is that for all three of these amendments, if an individual was recalled, uh, first of all, they would be ineligible to return to that position for which they were recalled for a period of 10 years. Uh, second, for voters to effectively recall someone, they first would go through this petition process, and then ultimately it becomes a vote of the electorate. If 60% of the electorate votes yes to recall the, the individual, then that person uh, is immediately recalled upon the certification of those uh, uh, that vote. 